Referendums were engineered in Moscow and imposed on Ukraine in total violation of international law. This land grab is illegal and illegitimate. NATO allies do not and will not recognize any of this territory as part of Russia. We call on all states to reject Russia's blatant attempts at territorial conquest. These lands are Ukraine. Donetsk is Ukraine. Luhansk is Ukraine. Kherson is Ukraine. Saporizhia is Ukraine, just like Crimea is Ukraine. This is the second time Russia has taken Ukrainian territory by force. But it does not change the nature of the conflict. This remains Russia's brutal war of aggression against Ukraine. And it does not change our commitment to support Ukraine. NATO is not party to the conflict, but we provide support to Ukraine so it can uphold its right for self-defense enshrined in the UN Charter. Ours is a defensive alliance. We stand united and determined to defend and protect every NATO ally and every inch of allied territory. This is a pivotal moment. Putin has mobilized hundreds of thousands of more troops, engaged in irresponsible nuclear saber rattling, and now illegally annexed more Ukrainian territory. Together, this represents the most serious escalation since the start of the war. None of this shows strength. It shows weakness. It is an admission that the war is not going to plan, and that Putin has utterly failed in his strategic objectives. Putin bears full responsibility for this war, and it is his responsibility to end it, to end the imminent suffering of the brave Ukrainian people, to end the energy and food crisis that is affecting so many around the world. If Russia stops fighting, there will be peace. If Ukraine stops fighting, it will cease to exist as an independent sovereign nation in Europe. NATO reaffirms our unwavering support for Ukraine's independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity. We remain resolute in providing support to Ukraine as it continues to defend itself against Russia's aggression for as long as it takes. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions. And we'll have time for just a couple of questions. We'll start with the news agency of Ukraine. Uh, thank you for your call. Uh, National News Agency of Ukraine, Dmitry Shkurko. Uh, we in Ukraine uh, have no doubt we will prevail and uh, liberate our territories. But a few hours ago, uh, Ukrainian leadership showed us uh, the possible way out of this bloody war and uh, officially applied to NATO membership. Uh, my question is, is uh, NATO ready to consider that kind of applications? And uh, the second part of the question, is it possible to consider the speedy procedure for that kind of uh, uh, membership, uh, like it was done for Sweden and Finland? Thank you so much. Every democracy in Europe has the right to apply for NATO membership, and NATO allies respect that uh, right. And we have stated again and again that NATO's door remains uh, open, and we have demonstrated that over uh, the uh, last uh, years. Um, <coughs> NATO allies, when they met at the NATO summit uh, in uh, Madrid, uh, stated also very clearly uh, that uh, we uh, support Ukraine's right uh, to choose its own, its own path, uh, to decide uh, what kind of uh, security arrangements it wants to be uh, part of. Uh, then uh, a decisional membership, uh, of course, has to be taken by 
uh, all 30 allies, and we take these decisions by uh, consensus. Uh, our focus now uh, is on providing uh, 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 immediate uh, support to Ukraine uh, to help Ukraine defend itself against uh, uh, the Russian brutal invasion, uh, and then uh, 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 that's the main focus and the main um, effort of uh, NATO allies uh, as we uh, speak. Associated Press. Yes, Secretary General, the, the war seems to have taken on a new dimension uh, today with both President Zelensky and President Putin taking fairly big um, steps. Um, I wonder, now that President Putin's annexed these parts of Ukraine and he's threatened to use nuclear weapons as well, would you, would you call for calm? Would you, would you advise President Zelensky to perhaps stay away from the region? How, how would NATO uh, deal with this as well from the outside? We call on President Putin to end the war. Uh, he is responsible for starting the war, and he has uh, the responsibility to end the war. Uh, because uh, uh, if uh, Russia stops fighting, there will be peace. If uh, uh, Zelensky and the Ukrainians stop fighting, Ukraine will cease to exist as an independent nation. So not speaking about, in a way, two equals. We have an aggressor, uh, Russia, and we have a country which is uh, 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 the victim of aggression, uh, Ukraine. Uh, and that's also the reason why uh, we are so clearly supporting uh, Ukraine. Uh, we, uh, the illegal annexations of, of, uh, of uh, Ukrainian territory doesn't change the nature of this war. It remains a war of aggression by Russia against uh, Ukraine. And of course, what we have seen over the last uh, weeks or days is uh, the most serious escalation of this conflict since the invasion on the 21st of February. Because we have the combination of um, the uh, mobilization in Russia combined with the reckless, dangerous nuclear rhetoric and then uh, today's illegal uh, annexation or attempt to annex uh, parts of uh, Ukraine. Together, this is the most serious escalation of the conflict since the start. Um, and the aim of President Putin is to deter us from supporting Ukraine. But he will not succeed in that. The message from NATO allies and from partners is that we will continue to support. The United States just announced today more support. Uh, and I spoke also with all the leaders over the last few days, and the NATO leaders, and they all have the same message. We need to stand united. We need to provide support uh, to, uh, to Ukraine, because this is, of course, in the interest of Ukraine, and that we help them to defend themselves. But it's also in our interest that we uh, ensure that President Putin doesn't win, because if he wins, the message is that uh, authoritarian powers like Russia can use military force and then achieve their goals, and that will make the whole world more dangerous. Sedef. <coughs> Thank you, Florian Neuhan, ZDF German TV. Mr. Stoltenberg, two questions, if I may. The first one coming back to the, my colleague's question on the nuclear doctrine of Russia. Once again, would you encourage, if you were asked, Ukrainian army, Ukrainian military to really attack those annexed regions and by this also maybe provoking a nuclear escalation since many people throughout the world and especially in Europe fear a nuclear escalation of this war. And a second question, you just today talked to Chancellor Scholz and I guess you also discussed the attacks on the pipelines. What could be the NATO and German response to that? Would an enhanced military presence in the Baltic Sea, for example, uh, be a response that you uh, consider? Thank you. Ukraine has, of course, the right to retake Ukrainian territory, which is now uh, occupied by Russian forces. That's the reason why we support them. So they can defend themselves, but also so they can continue to liberate ter territory. And as I said, the uh, uh, illegal uh, uh, annexation or attempt of uh, annexing uh, Ukrainian territory doesn't change that. It doesn't change the nature of this conflict. Because if we accepted that the annexation uh, by Russia and the uh, uh, nuclear uh, saber rattling uh, uh, actually deterred us from supporting Ukraine, then we accept uh, nuclear blackmailing. Then we accept 
that uh, by threatening of using uh, uh, nuclear uh, weapons, authoritarian powers like Russia can achieve exactly what they want. Uh, to take uh, control over a neighbor, Ukraine, and then deter us from supporting Ukraine in their absolute sovereign right to defend themselves against an aggressor, a right which is actually enshrined in the UN uh, Charter. President Putin's nuclear rhetoric is dangerous. It is reckless. Uh, NATO is, of course, vigilant. We monitor closely what Russia uh, does. Um, Russia must understand that the nuclear war uh, can never be won and uh, must never be fought. And uh, it will have severe consequences for Russia if they use nuclear uh, weapons. And this has been very clearly conveyed to Russia. Um, so uh, so uh, we will continue to support Ukraine and we will continue to support them in their uh, efforts uh, to uh, liberate uh, even more territory because uh, they have the right to do so. Uh, then on the, on, the, on the pipelines. Yes, I spoke with uh, Chancellor Schultz uh, today. Uh, we uh, uh, addressed, of course, uh, uh, the sabotage against uh, North Stream 1 and North Stream 2. This is very serious. Uh, uh, big explosions uh, destroying two uh, pipelines. Um, uh, we support also the efforts of, uh, 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 which are ongoing uh, efforts of investigation to uh, reveal the facts and, uh, and, uh, and uh, to determine who was behind these uh, attacks. Um, um, NATO uh, and NATO allies are present uh, uh, with uh, uh, naval capabilities, where uh, planes uh, uh, in uh, the Baltic Sea, in the North Sea, uh, and of course this sends a message of uh, allies and NATO readiness to protect and defend each other, also critical infrastructure. Uh, these allies, are, these capabilities, these planes, these ships are also uh, collecting uh, information, data, uh, which can be helpful both for the ongoing investigation but also to monitor uh, these uh, critical energy infrastructures. Uh, and uh, we are stepping up our sharing of intelligence, uh, sharing of uh, information. Uh, MARCOM, our uh, maritime command in Northwood, is collecting uh, um, a lot of this uh, information. and. Uh, and we're also actually reviewing some of the data we have already collected over the last weeks and months to see that when we look through those data again, whether we were able to discover something connected to the attacks on the two pipelines in the Baltic Sea. Uh, it also uh, highlights the importance of the work which is ongoing in NATO to strengthen the resilience, including resilience of uh, critical infrastructure. So a military presence to send a message of uh, deterrence, uh, to collect uh, and monitor, uh, um, collect data and monitor uh, 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 the uh, infrastructure, and then share information uh, and step up resilience are uh, the most important ways NATO and NATO allies are now supporting each other uh, to prevent uh, anything similar to happen to any other uh, 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 critical uh, energy infrastructure. Final question, Wall Street Journal. Dan Michaels with the Wall Street Journal. Coming back to some of the issues already raised, but thanks in large part to support of NATO members, Ukraine has had notable success on the battlefield uh, over recent weeks. But it does seem that the more success Ukraine has on the battlefield, the more erratic, uh, belligerent, and potentially dangerous Mr. Putin becomes. So um, does this change the way you approach the situation? Uh, does it you know, make you more cautious? Or in, in any way, the, this fact that the better Ukraine does in fighting the Russian troops, the, the bigger the threats seem to be from Moscow? Thank you. It doesn't change um, what we have to do, and that is to support Ukraine. Because if we let Putin win in Ukraine, it will be catastrophic for Ukraine. Ukraine will cease to exist as an independent sovereign nation, but it will also be dangerous for us. It's not as if inaction is not uh, uh, a risk. Inaction is a great risk. Because that will create a world where uh, Putin will see 
that, that uh, with impunity he can use military force, invade a neighbor, and then uh, establish a sphere of influence. So when you listen to what he has said, not only about Ukraine, but also about uh, members of NATO, Eastern allies, uh, that will be a world that will be more dangerous for all of us. So yes, we are faced with a, a, a dangerous a war in Ukraine, uh, but it's not as if that war will not be dangerous anymore if we allow Putin to win. In many ways, then we will at least increase the long-term risks for all of us. And that's the reason why we pay the cost of supporting Ukraine, knowing that the cost, the price we have to pay if we don't support them, most likely will be much higher. Um, uh, we are monitoring closely what Russia is doing. We haven't seen any changes in their nuclear posture. We are vigilant. Uh, we are sharing information. And uh, we have conveyed very clearly to Russia that there will be severe consequences if they use uh, a, a nuclear uh, forces uh, against uh, Ukraine. We also have to realize that we speak about different types of escalation. One thing is escalation within Ukraine. We have conveyed a clear message on that. Um, then, of course, there's also the risk of escalation beyond Ukraine involving all the NATO allies. Uh, we have also been very clear on that. NATO is not party to the conflict. We support Ukraine, but that doesn't make us party to the conflict. We support a sovereign nation in the sovereign right for self-defense. On top of that, we have also significantly increased our military presence in the eastern part of the lines. We did so immediately after the invasion because we were, we were prepared. So that morning of the invasion, we uh, activated all our defense plans from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea and started the additional deployment of additional troops uh, to the eastern part of the lines to remove any room for miscalculation or misunderstanding in Moscow about our willingness, our readiness to protect every inch of NATO territory. And more troops in the Eastern Part Alliance is sending that message. So uh, uh, NATO's aim, what we are doing, is to support Ukraine, but at the same time preventing escalation by sending a clear message to Moscow about uh, the dangerous nuclear rhetoric and the consequences uh, use of nuclear weapons will have and by demonstrating our readiness to defend and protect all allies by increasing uh, the presence of NATO troops and sea and naval capabilities in the eastern part of the lands. Thank you very much. This concludes this press point. Thank you.